Okay, good night to all our listeners and viewers, and welcome to the media briefing for Tropical Storm Cook. We have in our company the Attorney General, we also have Ministers Joseph Isaac and Reuben Blackmore, Minister of the Environment and Minister for Justice, respectively. And we also have a member of the police force with us tonight. There is not much change with the tropical storm at the 8 o'clock um, position. It's 12.7 north, 56.1 west, or 395 miles east-southeast of Dominica. It's still moving west-northwest at 18 miles per hour. The maximum sustained winds are 60 miles per hour with higher gusts, little six zero. Little change in strength is expected and tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 115 miles. Um, there's expected to be about 10 inches of rain, especially in the higher um, elevation. At this point, I know the general public is um, anxiously waiting what we have to say tonight. So I would like to call the representative of the police force to address us. All right, my name is uh, Richmond Valentine, Superintendent of Police, with responsibility for operations in the Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force. Uh, Dominica is placed under a tropical storm warning, and as a consequence, the Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force management, disaster management and response plan has been activated. And as a consequence, all police officers island-wide will be expected to be at work. According to our plan, with respect to the city of Rosa, our command center will be at police headquarters, and from that location, all necessary deployment will be done in respect to the management of the disaster. We have a responsibility for safety and security on island, and so we will be deployed at strategic locations to perform duties as necessary. This is not a time for the citizens of Dominica to be adventurous. Um, we are under tropical storm warning. So the advice from the police is to stay indoors, listen to the radio. And if you have no business in the city, um, you, it's best that you remain wherever you are in, in the country areas. So as has been done before, we'll ensure that uh, traffic congestion in the city of Roseau um, will ensure that that doesn't, that doesn't happen. And as far as is practicable possible, checkpoints are going to be in certain locations in an effort to prevent motorists from accessing the city. As I said again, we are under a tropical storm warning and citizens must, 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 in the interest of safety, it is advisable that you stay home. Okay, particularly tomorrow when, the, when we have been advised that sometime tomorrow morning we are gonna start feeling the impact. And so to make it easy for the law enforcement, we are appealing to the citizens of Dominica to comply with the security arrangements that are going to be in place. You've complied before, You've been very good citizens before. We are now asking for you to continue to comply with the arrangement that is going to be in place for your own safety, for the safety of, of everyone. All right, so as I said, our plan is activated. We are going to be in full force, island-wide, and we are there to ensure the safety and, and security for everyone. So my advice to you is continue to listen to the radio as the advisories and updates will be given so that if you have to take any necessary action, um, that will be done. But we are going to ensure that we are going to be out, ensuring that safety and security of 
state property and other property are well um, taken care of. So, Dominica is on a tropical storm warning, and I cannot overemphasize stay indoors. That's it for me at this time. Thank you very much, Mr. Valentine. And the word is stay indoors as much as it is possible. We do not want people roaming up and down the streets of Rousseau or anywhere else for your own personal protection and for your security. At this point, let me invite the minister responsible for the environment, climate resilience, disaster management, and urban renewal, Honorable Joseph Isaac, to address you. Special good evening to uh, be five and say that I'd like to recognize the presence of the Honorable Reuben Blackmore, Minister of National Security, and also the Attorney General, um, Honorable Levi Peters, and um, Superintendent Valentine. Um, also, I'd like to recognize the presence of the media there tonight. But a special good evening to everyone who is listening to me um, via this medium. Um, again, we are there on the tropical storm warning, but um, as I've said before, because of our position, our geographic position, Dominica will always be in a situation where we are facing a tropical storm or a hurricane or uh, some form of disaster. And it is not really because it is our fault, it is because of where we are located. And therefore, it is not if we'll get or face a disaster, but it's really when. And we are here again, and some people may be saying that, well, every time we have to plan and nothing severe is happening um, since Maria. But we remember that most times we think nothing is going to happen. Um, that way, that's when it hits us harder. So my message here tonight as the minister responsible for disaster management is, First of all, you need to protect yourself and your family, and you have a responsibility to the lesson for the unfortunate people, the more vulnerable people. These are the elderly and the young persons of your family. So I think the key word again is just like I've, I've said before, we have to remain vigilant, and we have to take this matter very seriously. Um, we had two meetings, NIPO meetings earlier today. Um, and tonight we had a, a meeting again with the um, senior police officers. Um, that's a cabinet subcommittee led by the Honorable Prime Minister. And all we are doing is just um, making final preparations and discussing approaches. But everything was already in place in regards to our strategic actions and to put certain things in place. For example, we, we had already earlier today discussed with the subcommittee responsible for transportation to ensure that heavy equipment are placed in, lo in strategic location. Um, that is, again, taking pre-active pre action, pre action um, in case there is a major um, impact. And most likely, we, we are looking at a potential impact of flooding. I think that is why, and that's one of the main reasons we are asking people to stay indoors. There is a potential impact of flooding because of the level of rainfall that we anticipate. Again, I said before um, that the whole issue of weather forecasting is not a perfect, perfect science. It's a combination of natural science and experience to make a projection. And therefore, when a storm or a, 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 a weather pattern, let's say it doesn't go how we expect it to go. I don't want people to drop their guards and say, well, you know, we should not be serious about it. Then it is about probabilities and whether what is the likelihood of something happening. And then when it is placed at a tropical storm warning or a tropical storm watch, you know that there is the potential for anything to happen. 
and therefore I'm appealing to everybody to remain vigilant. The people who are the, in the different shelters, I know we have already alerted and asked you to take action. Um, I know specifically in Ruzu, for example, that um, a number of people have already gone to the shelter in Ruzu Central. So I'm asking everyone across the country, if you have not done that already, I'm asking you to proceed, but do it safely. Um, that's what I can say for now. Um, as I say, let's pray, let's stay focused, and let's really be each other's keeper. One love to everybody in Dominica. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, without any further ado, let me ask the Minister responsible for Justice, Immigration, and National Security, the Honorable Raven Blackmore, to address you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Let me first of all say good evening to our wonderful listeners. But before I do that, I want to recognize you know, me, because I'm Honorable Joseph Isaac, Minister, of course, and the Attorney General, um, staff members of ODM, members of the media, and Superintendent of Police, Mr. Valentine. Um, ladies and gentlemen, those of you listening at home in Dominica and via the internet, good evening to you. <clears throat> First of all, I want to again commend the effort of staff of the ODM uh, who have been actually on the ball from day one. The chief med officer also have to, has to be commended. I, I want to just echo the similar sentiments of my colleague minister that uh, the state can never over prepare for a weather event because there is there's, there's no perf perfection in predicting a tropical storm. We may recall that tropical storm Erika was just a, a simple storm. And the devastating, devastation it brought to bear on us as a people was monumental. And we cannot at all forget Maria. To me, every time you hear of a storm approaching our, store, our, our shores, Maria comes to mind. But I want to just give the people of Dominica and our well wishes the assurance that from a security standpoint, you would have heard from, you heard from the police recently that um, all the systems are in place and the state will not hesitate to provide the requisite resources to the police force to ensure that the state's most fundamental function, and that is to keep the people of Dominica safe, is not compromised in any form or fashion. I am comforted by the fact that Kirk is indeed the name of my only son. And the Kirk I know of is a very loving human being. If I am to draw strength from that, I, I'm, I'm confident that Kirk will be very, very nice to Dominica in the circumstances. I hope he's listening. But having said that, I want to go again to echo the call for those of us who are living in vulnerable areas to actually keep yourself safe. I want to commend the Dominicans who have opened up their homes as shelters. We were told this morning when we met at our action plan meeting that there's a record number of persons opening the doors to welcome Dominicans to make them safer. And I think that in itself tells a very good story about, about us, Dominican. We have learned from Maria, and we have to be each other's keeper. Now, if you have no business for being out there, the safest place to be is at your home or at the shelter. And the police will be doing what it has to do in order to ensure that, first of all, there's, um, life is protected and also property is protected. So the onus is on us as responsible Dominicans 
to do the responsible thing. And that's fundamental to keep ourselves safe. The state can facilitate the process, but at the end of the day, it is your responsibility as a person to keep yourself safe. I can recall just after doing Isaac, and then we had traversed some of the areas, and there were people doing a sightseeing, standing next to the Rosa River. And I think that is a very dangerous, dangerous thing to do. So again, the advice is to keep yourself safe, to listen to, of course, the instructions given by the, by the experts. And of course, um, as you know, that we have almost developed a handbook as to how to treat with, with, with um, tropical storms and weather events. But of course, it's not, a, it's not an absolute situation because anything can happen. So it's, it's safer to keep yourself safe. There again will be a subsequent um, update a little later and, and we have to continue praying to God and monitoring the situation. Do not say that Isaac or Isaac okay, passed us and let us go on by safely. Every weather event has to be treated on its own merits. And I think we cannot use our past experiences to judge the potential impact of an impending storm. The obligation of the Chief Met Officer and the wonderful folks at the ODM is to bring out the information to you. But ultimately, it is your responsibility to act responsibly. So I want to, first of all, as I am finally sorry, to commend the police. I've been told, I've been advised, and I'm satisfied from what I've seen and read, that all systems are in place for the police to respond <coughs> appropriately. We shall not take any chances and we have to ensure that the police comes out with every degree of intensity in order to protect life, to protect the state assets, and to protect property. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Minister. Just by way of uh, a short recap, Tropical Storm Cook, 12.7 north, 56.1 west, 355 miles east southeast of Dominica, moving <coughs> west northwest at 18 miles per hour. Maximum sustained winds, 60 miles per hour with higher gusts. The next advisory will be at 11 o'clock tonight. Um, by way of announcements, no school tomorrow. Shelters are currently open for people wanting to go to shelters and you have been advised to stay indoors as much as possible. I'm not sure if the members of the media have any questions at this time. Yes, uh, Mr. Schillingford, my question is for the Superintendent Valentine. And uh, I would just like him to explain some things that he said earlier on. That, um, in fact, that the, the police will deal with congestion in Roseau. The police will also set up some checkpoints. And um, he's asking people to stay indoors as much as possible. Do you plan to implement a, a curfew or a set of emergency? Because you're asking people to stay indoors as much as possible. When exactly are you talking about? What time are you asking people to stay indoors? Well, as a matter of fact, as we speak now, Dominica is under a tropical storm warning. So even by that, persons ought to remain indoors. You mean tonight? For their own safety, yes, as we speak. Yeah, but... Yeah, what I'm saying, if you're asking people to stay indoors tonight, <laughs> on Wednesday night, you're talking about the system affecting Dominica sometime tomorrow afternoon. Why are you asking people to stay indoors tonight? Well, for their own safety, if you have no business in a particular location, my advice is to stay indoors. This is not a time for persons to be thinking of, of going places without, without any reason. 
Superintendent Valentine. Are persons that are living in, in, well, you've heard that persons who live in vulnerable areas should move to shelters. And that is primarily because Dominica is under tropical storm warning. So my advice is in the, for the, in the interest of persons' own safety. What time do you expect to um, implement the checkpoints that you referred to earlier on? What time in the day tomorrow? That will be done sometime tomorrow. Sometime tomorrow. Checkpoints. And what about things like, um, in terms of, you said that the, the, the traffic congestion in Rosa, you want to deal with that. Can you give us a time exactly what time you intend to deal with traffic congestion in Rosso? That will be dealt with sometime tomorrow. But my advice to motorists, if you have no, no business in Rosso tomorrow, stay home because Dominica is under tropical storm warning. Again, Superintendent Valentine. Again, are you planning, I mean, along with the authorities, to put in place a curfew or a state of emergency tomorrow? If that is necessary that will be done as we speak now dominica is not under a state of emergency or curfew but in the interest of safety for all dominicans it is advisable that you once you've person should have done all their preparation so now is the time to just stay home and listen to the radio my boss the the manager of dbs wants to ask you a question i will follow up in a little while sir Mr. Valentine, I just want to find out from you, if they don't, what would now be the law enforcers doing if they don't? So if you find someone at midnight um, on the streets of Roseau or driving on the streets of Roseau, what would be your, your enforcement on, on that individual? No, we are, there's nothing in place tonight to, to, to curtail anybody from, I'm saying, in the interest of their own safety. Dominic is on the tropic of someone, you know. So in the interest of you, their own safety, my advice is to stay home. But persons in Portsmouth, why do you want to come to Roseau? And when you know Makushri, for example, is a vulnerable area. Stay home. So don't give us unnecessary work. So I, we do not want any call tonight from anybody saying we got stuck somewhere or a landslide and obstructed us from moving from point A to point B. So to avoid that, all your preparations would have been done. Stay home and listen to the radio. It's as simple as that. And as you said, Superintendent Valentine, you don't have any time in mind at this moment. While you're making the statements, you cannot tell us about any time in mind. No. Huh? I said no. You cannot talk about any time. No. What do you know, Mr. Mr. Schillingford, about, um, about work for employees tomorrow? Can you, you can you, Mr. no, no, Mr. Schillingford. No announcement to that event. No, not so. So the employees should go to work tomorrow? As of now, yes. Employees should go to work tomorrow. The same thing, listen to your radio. Person should be at the home now listening to the radio and not worrying about venturing outside. We're under tropical storm warning. That is what is most important. Yes, Mr. Isaac, yeah. As of now, uh, as you know, the Prime Minister is the leader of cabinet. The Prime Minister has not made any decision in regards to no work. So, as of now, people, the indication is you have to report to work tomorrow unless you listen to the radio, and if that changes, then the Prime Minister would have make an announcement. But as of now, work is scheduled for tomorrow. Yeah, for can, yeah can we get the um, Mr. Marshall Alexander to at least, those joining the broadcast now, to at least give people an idea what is expected to happen tomorrow in terms of the, the weather system, where it's heading to in terms of how people should prepare and so on. Can you bring us that kind of information? Those joining the broadcast right now. <laughs> Yes, good evening, good night to all. Okay, um, as mentioned earlier, the um, extent of tropical storm force winds is 115 miles from the center, and the system is moving towards the west-northwest at 18 miles per hour. Now, based on that forecast track and the um, actual forward speed, we're expecting that the, the outer bands of that system is expected to reach Dominica by sometime late tomorrow morning or say by mid-morning tomorrow and then you'll have the the scent of that system moving across the area by afternoon into into evening tomorrow yeah, well, what so we saying, can expect what you're saying is interesting you're saying that 
we will be affected by midday tomorrow, by mid morning, 11 o'clock, 10, 11 yeah. o'clock. Yeah. I just heard from the, the consultant, Cecil Schillingford, that um, people should report to work tomorrow. You okay, say, let me clarify. 10 o'clock. This is the expectation based on the present movement of that system. The system can slow down or it can speed up. So that the, um, the what, what was given is an estimation. So things can change tomorrow. It's like you wanted to say something. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just like your questions. You know, sometimes your questions are deep, you know? <laughs> so in terms of the expectation you were talking about, we're expecting um, pockets of moderate to heavy showers, scattered thunderstorms, and winds to tropical storm force. That is between 39 to 73 miles per hour during tomorrow and continuing into um, tomorrow night. And, and Mr. Alexander, we can confirm now, we can confirm that by 10, 11 o'clock tomorrow, Dominica will begin to feel the effects of the tropical storm. Is that what you say? We cannot confirm that. You cannot it's, confirm a, it's a that. prediction. It's likely though. Yeah. Yes. By it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock tomorrow. Yes, that's the, the, that's the estimated be time we're looking at. Okay. 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 So, so finally, final question, um, Mr. Mr. Blackmore. Your final words to the Dominican public as we speak to them would be what? Your final words to the Dominican public as we prepare for this um, coming storm would be what? This is like, it's like a, re a recurring decimal. The fact is fundamentally is to keep yourself safe. And you do that by doing one. Unless it's absolutely necessary, you stay indoors. The state has taken every reasonable step to inform the people of Dominica as to one, the state's responsibility and the responsibility of the individual. So as I heard from both my colleague minister and the police superintendent of police, uh, Mr. Valentine, don't you forget that the country is still endlessly vulnerable. And then in a situation where you're expecting Everyone expecting, that's, that's, that's a material word, it's a prediction. You'll be risking your own safety as a person. If you're living in an area and you have to traverse to the next part of the country that is vulnerable, that is prone to landslide or flooding, the more, the, more, the more reasonable thing to do, or the most reasonable thing to do, is to stay indoors. You do not belong to the essential services, you're not a police officer, you're not a doctor, you're not a fire officer. You're not someone like you who have, to, who, has to, who have to report the news. So there is a reasonable thing to do is to stay home. A reasonable government monitors the situation, listens to advice from the experts, and then put out the relevant information and to articulate the course of action going forward. As we speak, as we heard from the minister, my colleague minister, that in turn, reference to because you have been spending the, the whole night asking questions about them, I mean, persons not reporting for work tomorrow. That, of course, will depend on the advice that the state received, the Prime Minister received, at 11 o'clock tonight. So maybe some of the questions you're asking now can be answered subsequent to 11 o'clock update on the weather event. Okay, so call a press conference asking, the question, <laughs> asking questions now is to preempt, you understand? Some of the things that may be said, based on, based on the advisory that we're going to receive at eleven o'clock. That's okay for you. Let's see, it can pass. Okay, all right, fine. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Curtis, I notice you've been trying to preempt, you know. No decision has yet been taken with reference to work tomorrow. So treat tomorrow as a normal day. Yeah, like now, if, really hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If, hold on, hold on, 
That's the reason I was Staying asking. indoors will apply to if we are going to be struck. Obviously, if we have work tomorrow, people have to be moving well, around. The superintendent said you, could, you should stay home from tonight. You sure that's what you heard? Yeah, that's what he said. Okay. Anyway, the situation is, obviously, if people are going to work, then they have to be moving. If we are struck, then the police will take the necessary measures, you know, and people are advised to stay inside, stay indoors. Okay, Curtis? All right. Thank you very much, uh, members of the media. Is there possibility and, uh, of another press conference tomorrow morning, sometime tomorrow? An announcement will be made at some stage. Members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for viewing and listening. And uh, any further announcement will be provided uh, to the media at some point.